child those policemen accountable? Why is the Inspector General of Police still sitting on that chair? We all know about the controversial death of Pio Gamapinto in February 24, 1965. Very few will remember January 29, 1969, where Agwin Skodek, a pioneering Mau Mau lawyer, died in a car crash under mysterious circumstances. The families of Pinto and Agwins have never known justice, and the same fate befell Thomas Joseph at the Amboya on July 5th, 1969. Have we forgotten J.M. Kariuki on March 2nd, 1975? Where is the truth about Bruce Roy Mackenzie's death on May 24th, 1979? We are here today to stand for justice for victims. We do not want to leave any man behind. The stories of those who came before us, the different regimes, the different decades, a testament that when political stars and fights come to an end, their bodies that are littered in the streets, their bodies that are left for our kin to deal with, yet no one knows justice, no one sees justice for those victims. I will go on until the cows come home, and you will all see that each regime in this country has had its fair share of assassinations, in an attempt to eliminate persons perceived to be standing for something that the political class do not want. Killing of innocent Kenyans on the streets started with Mzee Jomo Kenyatta on the dark Saturday of October 25th in 1969, when Jomo's visit to Kisumu turned bloody. We all know how many Kenyans died during the struggle for multi-party democracy under Moi's 24-year rule. Abductions, torture, and painful deaths did not start with this regime. The police have merely inherited the vice from generation to generation. And we are saying, does it stop in this generation? Yes. Does it stop in this generation? Yes. It must end in this generation. No more abductions, no more extrajudicial killings. President Mwaiki Baki presided over the worst type of killings. We cannot forget about the 2000 and seven 2008 post-election violence. And we do not ever want to go back there. Uhuru Kenyatta too was no different because every year the local newspapers reported how many people disappeared mysteriously in the hands of law enforcement agencies. And just when we thought there was a new dawn in this country, new hope, a country where the head of state was brought in in the mantra for the young people, a youthful leader. We have seen police disappointing this hope. And we are demanding from the head of state that his promise that there will be no extrajudicial killings in his tenure, in his reign, that he may hold truth to that, at least if for nothing else. Let people not die for standing for their beliefs. Let people not be abducted for standing for what they believe is right. And we are still demanding from him to ensure that all those who have been involved are arrested and prosecuted before our courts of law. The civil societies are struggling to put together the data of injured people, both of, from gunshots, crude weapons, and attempts to follow up on missing persons. We know that there are families that are still reeling in pain and anguish, and yet we want to move forward. We want to move forward, but we want to move forward with justice for everyone. This family should not be struggling with paying medical bills, struggling with fundraising to bury their kin. Yet we have a state, we have a nation, that the head of state has committed that they will be held accountable for each and every death, for each and every person who has been injured. I visited people at Kenyatta National Hospital young men and women like you who now will nev never walk again, they have lost their hands, where do they start? We cannot move on and forget them. For a nation to grow, we must move on together. And that is what we, the Law Society of Kenya and coalition of all our partners here today are standing for. We want justice for each and every one of our members in this great country.
fellow Kenyans, today we want us to begin a journey of truth and justice. Today we walk back the hands of time towards tracing the whereabouts of our missing brothers and sisters. Walk with me as we seek justice for our fallen heroes of the leaderless revolution. We are going to ensure that we give our family the hope to wake up every morning knowing that their son or daughter, whose remains abide in graves, spread throughout this country are not in vain. To that mother, to that aunt, to that sister, to that father, to that brother, looking for their loved ones, please come to us. We have created a network of social and civil rights defenders working together to unravel these mysteries. Let this be the last time that Kenyans will take to the streets in peace, only for trigger-happy policemen to flood the same streets with their blood and walk scot free. The plan is to set camp at almost every county that experienced police brutality during our protests. I want to raise my greatest appreciation for my different branch chairs all around the country that mobilized their members upon my request and call to go out to the different police stations all around the country. That is why we've been able to make a mark. Each and every one of my branch chairs, my council members, and every lawyer who heeded my request and call are the heroes that I can sing proudly from the Law Society side coming to defend the rights of Kenyans and fighting against any trumped up charges, those who have been kept beyond the required period in prisons and trying to ensure the safety and freedom of all Kenyans who have been arrested. There are so many people out there living in pain inflicted by the police. It could be mental health or just desolation. Please come out. Let our experienced team of experts offer psychosocial support to help you heal. Today we begin here at the historic Ufungamano House. We are coming to you all around the country. The Law Society of Kenya, together with all our partners here, have membership across the country, and with the support of our various branches and offices, have remained zealous and steadfast at protecting the Constitution. If we work together in this, then our defenseless families will not shed tears in vain. As a mother and a lawyer, I stand here today with a heavy heart of what we have seen the last few weeks the numerous calls that I've received, those in distress, even at very wee hours of the morning. It shows to you the winning strength of so many members of the public. Though in fear, some struggling, some in despair, but yet our young generation are still coming out strongly and firmly affirming that we are standing for accountability, transparency, we are fighting corruption. We want to see a positive change in our government. Those who have been coming out are loyal patriots of this country. They are standing for, to see a change. They are the same James Orengos and amongst others who came to fight for multi-party democracy. This is a fight against corruption, a fight for accountability, a fight for transparency, which we must embrace as a nation to move forward together. Even in commemorating those of us who are no longer among us, it would be remiss of me not to appreciate each and every one of your zealous, ingenious, persistent, and unified sacrifice for our country. You are ridiculed, underestimated, threatened, and vilified all in an attempt to break your resolve to reclaim your country. Through it all, you remained peaceful and focused on the noble objective of standing for what is right and what you deserve. Your, your courage is unparalleled, your patriotism unchallenged, and your unity against all political barriers unprecedented. You are exactly what you think you are. You are the heroes of today. The irrefutable gains of what you people stand for shines a bright ray of hope upon the future of our country. If you do not believe it yet, allow me to confirm to you that you people have achieved what many dreamed of and wished for, but few realized.
How we can unreliable parliament betrayed you, the people who they swore to represent you. Mlianguka now. A punitive tax regime was forced down the throats of Kenyans despite public outcry against the repressive finance bill. Mlianguka now. The political elite unified to run Kenya down the rabbit hole of treachery and deceit to deviate you from your resolve to bring change to Kenya. Namely, <laughs> an ineffective, incompetent, and arrogant cabinet represented impunity and refused to work for the people from whom the power they exercised. And once again, <laughs> Today marks a crucial step in our progressive journey towards real sustainable change for our country. This is the onset of a series of deliberations by sovereign citizens of Kenya to reflect on who, where, and what we are as a country. The preamble to our constitution defines who we are. Article 10 prescribes what we ought to be and the entirety of our constitution in its brilliant magnificence envisions where we ought to be as a nation. However, time without number, those to whom we have bestowed power and trust to deliver to us the dream of Katiba 2010 have failed us. Tumewa patia lakini wamekata kupaform. Kenya finds itself in a constitutional moment, one where the people have reclaimed their sovereignty and are ready to read of any individual institution or entity that jeopardizes the well-being of the country and defies constitutional principles. What started as demonstrations against the Finance Bill 2024 has spun into a domino effect that gives us an opportunity for change that is ours to lose. Shidazetu zikiangu kabado. Lazima zimeingia one leg. It is thanks to this realization that the Law Society of Kenya, all our partners and stakeholders have taken the obvious step to join all of you in forging the path on which we want our country set. Thank you for embracing us. Thank you for allowing us to stand with you. And thank you for allowing us to be part of you. I want to, my speech was quite long, but I wanted to also highlight that we have seen changes in the police service commission, we have seen so many trainings, but now we are saying we are going to hold you accountable. We are not going to sit and start discussing a way forward for training, better institutions, for police. It's time for accountability. It's time that we, those who have been given power and have abused it to be held accountable. That's why we are here today to count everyone and ensure no one is left behind. That when we are challenged that who are these people, where are they hurt, which place, we'll be able to table credible evidence as advocates and our different partners that will be able to table, put this at the table. That should be part of the discussion. Any dialogue must start with information and telling us these number of people that we have collected this data, what are you doing about it? And we urge, we know that IPOA will be coming today, that IPOA may also take responsibility and take that mantle. We will not allow you to continue to fail us as a people of Kenya. You must also take up your place and hold any uh, police officers that have been identified, have been seen. You can't tell us that you cannot find them, yet our Gen Zs, our millennials, our youth, our fellow Kenyans are able to trace them and to find their details and have shared them with you, but you refuse to do your work. To independent institutions, the judiciary, constitutional commissions, independent officers, and statutory bodies, it is high time you stand up to be counted. People have been killed by police, but IPOA is yet to act. People have been outed for corrupt conduct by DSCC is yet to institute relevant proceedings. The helpless feigned by, helplessness feigned by our institution is the greatest enabler for the tribulations we face. 
The hesitation and refusal by proper mandated authorities to take action in the face of subversion of the rule of law and constitutional principles is the reassurance upon which our aggressors act with impunity. Government frustration and refusal to cooperate are in one way, are in no way, shape, form, or fashion unacceptable excuse. The people are with you, they will support you, they will help you finish the job, but only if you start doing it and doing it well. Na hata nini mkikata, wa Kenya mtafanya nini? <laughs> Lastly, to the political leadership and elected representatives. There is no honor higher than being chosen by the people to serve your country. That honor requires delicate, deliberate, impartial, and accountable ex ex exercise of that authority that is donated to you. Hubis and bravado are vices that have no place in the Kenya of today. The people of Kenya awake to their full authority as a true sovereign, and their realization of the beauty of their unity draws the curtains on divisive ethnic politics that has historically been endemic in this Kenyan's politics. It's time to become leaders, not rulers. It is time to represent and serve the people, not to be demigods desperate for constant praise.